Hey everybody, it's Greg Reddy here, and in this video we're doing a photo challenge with Josh, and it's natural light versus off-camera flash. Plus, we'll also be comparing the Canon 5D Mark IV versus the Nikon D850. For this series of shots, I was using the Godox 8600 Pro with the Westcott 36-inch Rapid Box XL with two layers of diffusion. My camera was the Nikon D850, and I was using the 105 f1.4 lens. Now I took a test shot and then I was repositioning my modifier and I just verified it was in the place I wanted it. It was about three to four feet from the model and I was also using a tripod for this first set of shots and I was using the Hoodman loop to get a better look at my LCD screen because the sun was right behind our model. So I took a couple shots and this one I quite liked and what I did was I made the water a little more blue in Photoshop. So I did a little bit of Photoshop enhancing there and then we tried to vary up the shots a little bit. so. I asked her to remove her jacket and then I decided to move away from the tripod. I found the tripod a little restrictive. So I started to move around a little bit more freely, you'll see in a second. And then it was just a matter of going through some different poses and really trying to work the scene and really trying to get the exposure balanced in the background with the front exposure of the flash. That was the most challenging, but I was shooting in high speed sync mode. So I was able to shoot at shutter speeds up to 8,000. So that made it a little bit easier to balance things. And Josh had a bit of a harder time with his natural light shots because he wasn't able to do that. Here's another shot, and I enhanced the water a little bit more in Photoshop. So Josh is up next with the Canon 5D Mark IV and natural light. Yeah, so uh, as you can see here, I'm only using a reflector, no light, no nothing. It is a Westcott Photo Basics 5-in-1. Uh, it's the most durable one I've used over the years of me shooting. Uh, as Craig mentioned earlier, I am dealing with all of that sun over the tree line bouncing off the lake and uh, even in the in-camera footage, you're seeing a blowout of the lights, and I was dealing a lot with that. I didn't really do anything with the water temperature or anything like that. I just kept it as is. I first experimented with a bit of white as the bounce light so that I didn't want to make her too yellow, and I also want to try with the gold shot right here. The attempt is to cover the foreground with too much yellow, and so when I balance your skin tone back to regular, the water will look a little bit more blue. So these are two different ways of doing it. I think I was kind of hacking it from the front, and uh, you were hacking from the back end. Now these are the shots from the next section over. We moved down the shoreline a bit, and again I was using the flash. Josh was going to be up next with the natural light. And the sun was going down, it was about maybe an hour before sunset, and then it was just a matter of getting that modifier in position and then going through a range of poses. So she started to go through a range of poses, and it was just a matter of me really capturing that right expression and that background. So I was trying to go for an undistracting background, and uh, it's just the water you'll see in a shot coming up right here. I asked her to hold that pose once I saw her get one that I liked, and I said, just hold it, and I took a couple shots, and I really got the background the way I wanted it, so you can see it's just the water in the background. And then I added a little lens flare and made the background a little more blue. And there's another shot here in the same location, and I'm just sort of inching up and down that hill so I can get those trees out of the shot. And you'll see here's another one here, and that's just the water in the background, and a little bit of reflection of the trees in the water in the background. And then I decided to do a couple of headshots, so I just moved in a little closer. I was using the Nikon D850 with the 105 at f1.4. It was a matter of just going through a couple of range of, you know, slightly turn your head this way, turn it that way, and it was just a matter of capturing that right expression and that right head tilt. And I think I got a pretty good image here, and the background was just darkened trees. Uh, so here uh, I'm actually shooting with the sun below the tree line now, so I'm no longer dealing with all that bright glare. I'm only dealing with the glare from the sky, which is a lot less intense than the sun itself. And I wanted to go for more of that lazy, hazy summer evening look. So a lot of my photos will be a lot more warm tone, whereas I think Craig goes for a very uh, water-themed color tone I guess you could say you know and you know both both are different directions you can take with the same scene so that just goes to show you didn't bring your flash your flash ran out of batteries it's not a complete you know it's not a complete wash you know and I think most of these I didn't even use a reflector because the light levels behind her and the light levels in front of her was so similar that the shots looked really good right out of camera anyways but uh because the way I was shooting, it kind of worked out because the 5D can pull more information from the highlights, whereas the Nikon can pull more from the shadows, right? 
All right, in this segment, we're gonna go through a couple of images and we're gonna talk about maybe our thought process. I'll start with one of my favorite ones and then we'll go to one of Josh's. We'll talk about some of the challenges shooting with natural light versus off-camera flash. And we'll talk about the different camera brands and whether we notice the big difference or not in the two. So I'm gonna call this one up here. And this one I quite like. I think it was a magical capture of just that right expression with her eyes, with her mouth, with her hands. And then it was just a matter of sort of toning that water. Like Josh said, he was more going for a warmer look. I like to shoot cooler. I like my images to be around 5200 Kelvin. And then I like to cool the background down even more than the subject. So I adjusted for the skin tone in Capture One. And then in Photoshop, I brought in a little bit more blue into the background to get this type of image. And I had it easier than Josh. I was able to control my exposure in the background Whereas Josh, well, it was more challenging for him to have to do that. So it was kind of unfair, really, this challenge. But let's look at one of Josh's images. We'll call that up now. So do you like the first set that you did more or the second set? Or? You know what? They, I, Honestly, I like the second set more, okay, mostly because ones. it was easier to edit. But the yeah. first ones, definitely, they had images yeah. there that I liked, too. Well, let's look so. at the second set, then. This is Yeah, the so here's that lazy, hazy summer look that I was going for. You know, a lot of the warm tones and... Uh, just the the highlights in her hair just catching off the the golden glow of the sun the sunset so to say um i must have to say i kind of regret not shooting with a wide angle lens because the clouds at that particular moment was really nice but by the time i was done my seven minute set and by the time craig got there he had like all of a minute of nice sun and uh, not nice sun but nice clouds and uh, they just, they were gone. So, I mean, it didn't matter that much. But um, you'll also notice there's a slight difference in the way we shoot, too, where while I do blur out my background, I don't obscure as much of it out. Um, that's a stylistic choice. But for me, uh, I, I'm in the event photographer mode where I shoot weddings. And I occasionally have these couples who spend a fortune on a really beautiful location only for the photographer to blur out the background. And let's be honest, we this is a beautiful lake. This is an absolutely amazing lake. And I felt like we should capture some of that in the background too, you know? Yeah, there's two approaches to that. I've had people say, well, it's a beautiful location. Why don't you show the background? And for me, a portrait is about the person, and that's my approach. So I try to make the background very minimal. But I also can understand Josh's opinion where if you're at a beautiful location, show that. And so partly the reason why I pick nice locations is for the video, because we're shooting wide angle for the video, we're painting around. So I want the video to be pleasing for the viewers at home. But as far as when it comes to the photos, I really want it to be about the person. So it's a combination of why I pick those locations, but don't show them in my images, which is which is kind of weird, but I kind of liked your approach. Though. It depends on your client, really. Yeah. I mean, if your client is the model, then, you know, focus on the, obviously, your your the person, the human element, whereas weddings is sometimes a location thing too, right? You know, a beautiful chapel with a beautiful dress and a beautiful tux, they should all just be in a beautiful photo together. Yeah, and as far as the Nikon versus the Canon, I didn't notice a huge difference. I think there's probably a noticeable maybe dynamic range with the Nikon. But as far as when I look at these images, even up close, um, they're both great cameras, so I don't think, you know, one over oh, the other yeah. really that much. I no, mean, I mean, it's like the difference between Lamborghini and Ferrari. They're both really fast cars, yeah, and uh, these are both really good cameras. I would have thought there would have been a more noticeable difference between the two, but I'm a little bit surprised. And I like the bokeh in Josh's shot. If you found these tips helpful, give us a thumbs up for this video. And also, let's hear your comments. What did you think of the natural light shots versus the flash shots? Did you see a difference between the Nikon and the Canon? Just let us know in the comments down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification. So if we go live, Josh and I are planning a live stream pretty soon where we're going to talk about some of these shoots and we're going to answer your questions. So if you want to be part of that, just make sure you click on that bell notification. And also for those of you who don't know Josh, Josh is the videographer behind all the videos for the last four years. And if you'd like to see Josh in more of these videos, just let us know in the comment section below. Just say, show more, Josh, less of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I show up on camera more often, yeah. not less clothes. <laughs> no, no, yeah, of course, Josh more on camera. That costs More of this type of stuff. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey, everybody, it's Craig Richter here. In this video, we're doing a photo challenge with Josh, and it's natural light versus off-camera flash. That's your cue. Oh.
Canon versus Nikon. Oh, we were starting from there. Yeah, oh, yeah, I thought we just come on, yeah. use jump cuts. Right? Jump cuts is your well, friend. Okay, let's try. Anyways, again. let's try it one more time. <laughs> 